All right, what we'll work on today a little bit is, is controlling our opponent from side control and how we start to begin our attacks. And side control is no different than the guard, no different than any other position. I feel like the best way to initiate offense is by first stripping down our opponent's defense. Like, how can I segue into my techniques better? I have to make sure he's not ready for them. He's not bracing. And, and when you're holding somebody across side, his first line of defense are his frames, his arms. His legs too, of course, but we're gonna focus today on, the, on killing those frames. We're gonna concentrate on the, on the near side frame, and we can work on the outside as well. But he's gonna be on his back. We're already holding side control, and in this, in this case, we're on all fours, like chest to chest. The near side knee, something always needs to be blocking this hip, of course. Make sure this knee does not come in, but nevertheless, he's gonna have that knee right against my hip, which is what he should do. So the challenge here is good arm placement means that near side frame is at a 90 degree angle. This is really important if you notice the, the direction of Keith's hand, his, his fist is pointing up. And the reason why I say this is sometimes we can let that angle change a little bit. We kind of hold, we feel like as long as the forearm is against the hip, I'm safe. But if you look at the angle of his hand, and you gotta be really careful because it's not always your partner's fault, but maybe I wanna switch my base. I put my hand here, and when I drop my hip, if I drop it suddenly, he doesn't have the right angle to frame, and it's almost, it's like three quarters of an Americana. Boom, that, that hand, that frame drops, that my hip weight drops, and it starts to put undue pressure. So the near side frame has to always be 12 o'clock. Whenever you feel that starts to compromise, you shift your hip out. That's gonna help take the pressure off. But never allow this hand to kind of sit like this. It's always, the brace is 90 degrees. So knowing that, and now he has this hand here, blocking here, any movement that I make to try to, try to attack, I, I'm met with this. And if I lift my weight to try to alleviate, he's gonna escape. So we keep the pressure. I have a cross face, I have an underhook. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move laterally down his body like this. As I do, the cross face hand comes out on his shoulder and I bring my elbow right to my ribs. Now you see where his frame is. Now I open my elbow and put my knee over. Now that arm's out of commission. The single staple alone is good. Um, if the arm gets loose and gets caught between your legs, there's nothing wrong with that too. There's offense we can create. Personally, I like to, when we get here, and these are all options for you, I like to transfer the staple to the rear leg because now this gives me access around his body with my hips while still controlling that leg. So once we break this down, I switch, it still leaves this hand to deal with. So he can be holding, he can be bracing tight, whatever the case may be. I make a fist, it's my own chest, circle out and I go, not with the hand, with the wrist. Straight for the Americana. This is usually the first attack you're gonna wanna do from this position because his arm is already in place. I don't wanna take the weight off. I kinda lean back a little bit, my hand comes up, over. See the natural bend, it's right there. Usually what will happen when you do this, they stretch the arm. Now I have elbow control. With the staple, with both arms, he's defenseless. So just a, a very basic attack from here now. I swing my knee around. The knee's gonna slide all the way to his hip, ensuring my hips go forward. Now I just rotate. When we collect the arm, always lean a little bit towards the hips. If I go here, I'm, and yeah, that encourages the hitchhiker escape. Just a, a little adjustment towards the hip Every time he tries to run, his arm stays behind. But if I go here, he goes out. Chest to chest, knee to the inside. You, to stabilize the position, you can lock and put some pressure. But to create offense, there has to be some disconnection. So I'm going to unlock. I move down, and my hand draws back. Don't target his arm. 
target your own ribs. His arm will just be there as a result. Now I open my elbow and bring my knee up. Now I come back chest to chest. Can you do the Americana right from here? Absolutely. But if you wind up in the same scenario, I lose the control if I start to come around like this. That, you see how the hand opens up. And it's not a, it's not a, it's not a sure thing that he's gonna get out, but it's a control I don't wanna give him. So I wanna make sure I'm always pinning that arm. So you hold here, you move down, bring your elbow back. Now we open the elbow, bring the knee out, switch. Now we go after the shoulder or the arm. Once I get elbow control, bring my hand up just below the elbow to control because there's different ways we can finish this arm lock. But all we're doing now, you step over, take the knee close to the hip. That ensures that your hips go right up alongside the shoulder. Now I just rotate and then again, lean a little towards the hip. No need to pull on the arm too hard. Just finish right here. If your back is on the ground, the hand should never really get close to your chest in practice with your friends. If you're holding up here, this is fine, but you have to have good, good uh, core control because this, his arm is an extension. I drop, I let go. Then it's a safe, safe way to finalize the arm. Okay, any questions? Um, do you ever grab the arm, I'm sorry, the, the left leg, um, his left? When coming um, around? As, as you're coming around to when you, avoid you, 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 you can, you can, that's another option. Just to kind of finalize one last, one last look. I'm here, I move down, bring my elbow back, open, switch, go for the Americana, he extends. Because this hand is free, absolutely, I can go this way. This way. The only thing, because it's no gi, you see how his arm is, especially his wrist. Wrist control is really important with no gi. Because even if I go back, you see how this kind of will help facilitate. I can't even finish the arm. I like to hold the wrist, but to make sure, because I'm not holding that, that's why I turn towards the hip a little bit. Then I don't need to, you don't need to rely on holding the leg. You guys will see it. When you get the arm bar, finish here. Tell the person to turn out. You see it's easy. So when you, when you finalize the arm, point the thumb and your knees a little towards their hip. Then tell them to try to spin away. It's, I am not, and you notice, I'm not pulling on his arm at all. He will come back because he'll feel the pressure on his elbow. So you can hold the leg. Nothing wrong with that. But I think you'll find that both hands on the arm and controlling the wrist be a little bit safer, okay? Uh, can you go back to the way you, uh, you pinned his, uh, his right arm? What is, what's the motion pinning it? Are you actually, when you slide away, is it, uh, you said you're using See his your elbow? Frame. My elbow opens his elbow up, oh, gotcha. but now my knee pops through the hole. <clears throat> when I move down, see it's like, 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 let's put it this way. I can come down and use my knee to open his elbow up, but his arm is still in a place where he, if he swims his body up a little bit, he'll re-pummel that arm back in. So I want to staple it. So when I go down, I need my elbow to open. Now my knee just comes up. That's so you're just doing the classic knee to, knee to elbow? Yeah, knee to elbow. And then your knee goes in that, that little hole. But once you hold here, Going around him is going to be challenging because I have to let go of the leg or let go of his arm. So switch. Now you see how my hip is free, but his arm is left behind. And the one two is the Americana to the far side arm bar. That's what we're doing this morning. This is why, like, the Americana is a super high percentage attack. You may not always be successful, but it, it guarantees two things one of two things. You're either going to lock the shoulder out or he's gonna extend his arm, now you have full elbow control. Full control of that arm. And once you get this, always be mindful, he puts that hand back in front of me, the Americana's waiting for him. So he will never put it back. It's gonna stay here. But now you have that arm. Make sense? Any questions? Awesome, let's go guys, one, two, three.